Hi everyone, this is Glenda Ganzon and welcome to my Human Anatomy and Physiology class. And for today's video, I'm going to introduce to you the two divisions of the skeletal system. So stay tuned. Kick. The skeletal system forms the rigid internal framework of the body and it consists of the bones, cartilages, and ligaments. So bones support the weight of the body and allow for body movements and protect internal organs also. So cartilage provides flexible strength and support for the body structures such as the thoracic cage, the external ear, and the trachea and larynx. At joints of the body, cartilage can also unite adjacent bones or provide cushioning between them. So ligaments are the strong connective tissue bands that hold the bones at the, at the movable joint together and serve to prevent excessive movements of the joint that would result in injury. So providing movement of the skeleton are the muscles of the body which are firmly attached to the skeleton via connective tissue structures called tendons. As muscles contract, they pull on the bones to produce movements of the body. Thus, without a skeleton, you would not be able to stand, run, or even feed yourself. Each bone of the body serves a particular function and therefore bones vary in size, shape, and strength based on these functions. For example, the bones of the lower back and lower limb are thick and strong to support your body weight. Similarly, the size of bony landmark that serves a muscle attachment site on an individual bone is related to the strength of these muscles. So, muscles can apply very strong pulling forces to the bones of the skeleton. And to resist these forces, bones have to enlarge bony landmarks at sites where the powerful muscles attach. And this means that not only the size of a bone but also its shape is related to its function and for this reason the identification of bony landmarks is important during your study of the skeletal system bones are also dynamic organs that can modify their strength and thickness in response to changes in muscle strength of body weight thus muscle attachment sites on bones will thicken if you begin a workout program that increases muscle strength and similarly, the walls of weight-bearing bones will thicken if you gain body weight or begin pounding the pavement as part of a uh, new running regimen. So in contrast, a reduction in muscle strength or body weight will cause bones to become thinner. And this may happen during a prolonged hospital stay, following limb immobilization in a cast or going into a weightlessness of outer space, even a change in diet such as eating only soft food due to the loss of teeth will result in a noticeable decrease in the size or and thickness of the jaw bones. The skeleton is subdivided into major divisions, the axial and appendicular. So the axial skeleton forms the vertical central axis of the body and includes all the bones of the head, neck, chest and back and it serves to protect the brain spinal cord heart and lungs and it also serves as the attachment site for muscles that move the head neck and back and for muscles that act across the shoulder and hip joints to move their corresponding limbs the actual skeleton of the adult consists of 80 bones including the skull a vertebral column and the thoracic cage. The skull is formed by 22 bones also associated with the head or an additional seven bones including the hyoid bone and the ear ossicles and there are three small bones in the ear ossicles found in each middle ear. The vertebral column consists of 24 bones and each called a vertebra plus the sacrum and coccyx so the thoracic cage also includes the 12 pairs of ribs and the sternum and the flattened bone of the anterior chest 
And the second subdivision of the skeletal system is the appendicular skeleton. And this appendicular skeleton includes all the bones of the upper and lower limbs plus the bones that attach each limb to the actual skeleton. There are 126 bones in the appendicular skeleton of an adult. So this ends my video about the two subdivision of the skeletal system which is the appendicular skeleton and the actual skeleton. And if you have any question, please write it in the comment section down below and I'll be glad to answer them all. And if you like this video, please like and share. And also please hit the notification bell so that you'll be updated with my new videos. So once again, I would like to thank you all for watching my video and for listening to my discussion. Until my next video, Bye everyone!